Hello. All right, we should hopefully be live. Um, if you can hear us, just let us know in the chat, just as a bit of uh, visual feedback. But yeah, hello to those of you who have joined us today. Uh, we have a very exciting match for you today. This is a brand new tournament that we've got uh, from the Wingspan Tournaments Discord. So this is the, and I'm going to absolutely butcher this pronunciation, this is the Vouye Duck Dash. Um, that, was, which is, that was really good. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, so this is a new tournament that was started just today, uh, and it's uh, best of three knockout single elimination, uh, but it's our biggest ever tournament. So we've got 100 participants in this one, um, which absolutely smashes the, the previous record. I think the previous most we had was 64. Uh, so this is another another 50% on top of that. So yeah, absolutely huge tournament. And yeah, we've got a long way to go in this one. But we have a very exciting match for you today. So just to introduce your players, we have Geest and we have Sachin. Um, so as I said, this should be a really good match. And talking you through it today, my name is Flan and my co-host today is Mother Love. So welcome, Mother Love. How are you doing? Hello, yeah, I'm, I'm doing all right. Doing all right, excited, Excellent. as always. Yeah, yeah, so I think it's always exciting. You know, we had obviously one tournament end yesterday and very, very swiftly moving on to another one today. Oh yeah, um, tournament end and we, we have to mention Flan came out on top. Did indeed. So we, if you we're in the presence of royalty, <laughs> I wouldn't quite go that far. Um, but yeah, no, that was that was a, a good a good set of matches. So um, yeah, you can always catch up on those. We have some previous live streams on this channel uh, from that tournament, but we do have some over on on Tuck and Cash as well. So uh, just a little shout out for their channel. Go and go and have a look over there if you yeah if you want to catch up on some of those. But as I said, uh, got a brand new tournament today. Um, so I think. We're ready to go. Um, so Geest will be sending the invite. Uh, I think they're sending it random. So we will see um, who's going to go first. But yeah, best of luck to both players uh, in this first round match. As I said, it's best of three. Um, so we could well be in for a long haul here um, with, with three very high quality matches. Um, but yeah. It's just I'm just trying to remember. Does this have a tournament win yet? I think he does. I think it has been a little while. Um, I know he's the one up for the World Cup. Of yes. <laughs> <laughs> and again, you can you can you can find that stream um, elsewhere as well on uh, on Tuck and Cash's channel. But excellent. All right. I think we have. Oh, it looks like Sachin's going first. Um, so. Not Ooh. not a terrible starting hand, but probably could use some wetlands, really. Um, yeah, yeah, I was going to say no wetland burn, but um, the Grasshopper's Power I actually really like mm. in, your, in your starting hand, just because it's less expensive than the others like it. Yeah, yeah, that single food, um, it's, it's a lot easier to get down, and yeah, you, there's a, there's a few, there's a few uh, end of round goals that are egg related, so you know it always helps if you can get a few more of those those eggs down as well. But yeah, it doesn't doesn't look like anything great in the tray either from a wetlands perspective. So yeah, just uh, the conto. So yeah. really, the, the last remaining option is the blue ghost beak. As much as I hate to even consider it. Yeah, it's not a it's not a great one. It is kind of one where as like a last resort, um, you might consider going for it um but yeah i think the the alternative is just really sort of digging from the from the deck which yeah is is always a bit of a risk um mm -hmm. but yeah i, I think mean, the... i think gross beat could work you know the food in the tray uh, is quite friendly for it for, from that perspective so i think you could you could you know keep keep those those two they've got selected and the gross beak and and you know still manage to get enough food to yeah, yeah because actually with with the wet start you you can get food pretty easily and with the grasshopper's power it's actually easier to get eggs to then throw them to dig into the deck yeah yeah very good point um yeah you know if you can get three eggs a turn from your from your grasslands then that that gives you three chances of, of digging through the deck rather than just two so mm -hmm. yeah be interesting to see what they do here they um, didn't keep it can't really blame them no <laughs> no they might go for condor um, as as we said, as kind of that backup option, but 
-hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll we'll see on that. But again, not uh, not great for for Geest either, really. Um, you know, the Harry obviously can go in the, in the wetland, so it's not bad. But you know, they're kind of they're they're missing that forest bird. Um, that that obviously. I mean, Satch has got quite a nice one in the red start, and yeah, might might be might be a struggle for Geest in terms of getting food early on. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna keep one bird in when dig. They could keep the Mergenza for the wall as well, but that seems Yeah, I'm not not worth it. No, no, there's not there's not many situations where I would consider <laughs> keeping the Mergenza <laughs> from your opening five. I think I think Harrier and, and the four food, I think you're right, sort of get that down, lay eggs on it and, and just start digging through the deck and you know, hopefully you can get something cheap. Um, that goes in the forest with that with that remaining food you've kept. So, yeah, yeah. not not the best starting hand though. At least Harry is one of the predators that can have two eggs. Yes. <laughs> so, sometimes people keep only one bird and can only have one egg, and that usually doesn't go yeah. very well. Yeah, interesting. They're looking at the magpie as well. I was just thinking, you know, it it, it fits with those end of round goals quite nicely. Um, with yeah, the star he also he also gives him a. A bird for the first one, which yeah. uh, is usually the harder one to mm. to fill up the the western habitat. Definitely, yeah. Although they they've gone for the night heron in the end, so that's uh, that's quite a bold decision, um, especially considering they won't be able to get all the food to get both of those down straight away. You know, there's no mm -hmm. there's no rodents in the feeder, so um, yeah, could be a could be a bit of a slow one to get those two down. Ecologist is pretty good on the other hand. You know, yep. they can actually manage to draw better birds throughout the game. Yeah, yeah, the bonus card, I think certainly certainly Geese has got a nicer bonus card um, than what Sachin's looking at, you know, that passerine specialist. I think both the birds have got meet it, but yeah, yeah, it, you still need a couple you more. I say that, but both those, oof, <laughs> very nice to work That is, them. yeah, <laughs> that, is, that is about perfect. If you're, if you're going to go for the deck, <laughs> I don't think you could have asked for for a much better draw than that, so yeah, I could think they can look to get this red start down, and and yeah, within a couple of turns they'll they'll have the food for the the Galenule as well. So not uh, not a terrible not a terrible blind draw from the deck there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really good position from here for um, Tachin. Yeah, a, b a bird for every habitat, and they're all a pretty good power. They're all a, a mm. power that gives you resources. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, they can. They can almost certainly get all three of those down uh, in this first round, so that's going to help them. You know, they'll they'll at least get something qualifying for this um, this first end of round goal. But yeah, as well with that gallon, you you know, it's got four egg spaces, which is really going to help out that that grass apple sparrow. You know, you're getting more eggs, but you kind of need the space to keep those as well. So uh, it's good from that perspective. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, it kind of depends on what gist is going to mm. do. Because he's in the back now. He's playing catch up a little bit already. Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know, he's he's really going to need to just get something down in this wetland um, and and just start digging for cards. Because yeah, I mean, we already said you know the the strong setup that Sachin's going to get is that they're going to have these nice brown powers in every habitat, and it's going to get them extra cards, extra eggs, extra food. Whereas you look at the you look at the birds that Jesus has got not really anything particularly strong you know you might get something from the harrier um and and the night heron isn't bad but it, it kind of needs support and you're not really getting much of that from any of the other birds that you're that you're playing alongside it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm curious as what they're trying to do here because I, I was thinking mm -hmm. if they kept the night heron they might go for the western meadowlark just to have that that excess of eggs yeah potentially um, but with only the one space condor, it's going to be a bit tough. Yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to play the condor and lay eggs, and then at least he can use the eggs on that condor from the night heron to try and get the harrier down. Because I think the problem at the moment is there's no rodent, so the only way really for them to get a rodent to get that harrier down yeah, yeah, yeah. is is using the night heron. But you know you you need another bird already down to discard eggs off. So. Um, it'd be interesting to see where they play the condor. You know, is that going to be their grassland bird for this end of round goal, or, mm -hmm. or are they going to just try and get something down in the forest so at least they have the option of you know, discarding cards to get that extra food? Yeah, that's a very good point because I had assumed Northern Harvey and the Wentland straight away, but that gives them does give them an advantage. They're going to be able to have all three birds down. 
Hmm. Although he has just laid eggs on the Night Harem. Um, so I can only assume then that the Condor is going next to wetlands. that in the wetlands. Yeah. yeah, just to get that second that second card. But then, you know, even if he does do that, he's going to have to lay eggs again because you can't you can't use the Night Heron's power discarding eggs on on that bird. You need a you need a second bird to discard eggs off. So uh, it could be a, it could be a little bit of a slow start here for Geest. Yeah, I just think the only the only thing maybe that's going to slow Satchin down a little bit here is uh, is is the bird feeder. Uh, that's quite bold, going yeah, from the yeah. top of the deck again, and, and they've especially been before bailed out really. Bird. Yeah, I I would have I would have looked to get food a couple of times because you know they've not there's no cherries there, so you know they are going to have to overpay a little bit. But with that red start, you know even just two turns of, of gaining food, they'll get the four food they need to get that down and. Yeah, you could have got that Galenule down, laid eggs, and then suddenly when you're drawing cards, you're, you're getting three a turn. So, yeah, interesting play to go from the top of the deck there. Yeah. I think I sort of get it, because I've done that in the past sometimes, if the food's not there. Mm. Just take a blind draw with the idea that if it's bad, you can just throw it away. Yeah, move. Yeah, I mean, it's like you say, you've got that insurance of, well, even if I don't want to play it, I can at least turn it into something that I do want. Uh, I wonder maybe if they were expecting, you know, seeing that Geest has got no food, um, you kind of think, okay, well maybe, maybe he's going to need to go from the bird feeder at some point because he's, you know, he's obviously got the night heron, but that's only going to get you so far. Um, mm -hmm. You know, at some point your opponent's going to go for food, um, and just maybe help you reset that bird feeder a little bit. Um, but I think this is the right move here, going, going for food because at least you know now they can they can take that fish and re-roll and. Hope they get a cherry to at least get this gal and you're down quickly. Yep, yep. If Sachin took food first, they could have drawn the loon. It says Matt Stein in chat. I'm not yeah. sure Sachin wants the loon to be fair. Yeah, have two birds down. Yeah, it's it's not bad. I mean it's, I think as soon as you see your opponent play two wetland birds quickly like Geest has done, you're kind of yeah, a bit actually, safer yeah. playing the loon because you're guaranteed to get that card every time. So it you know it wouldn't have been a bad move, uh, and obviously the like fish taking the loon and not taking the playing the galinula exactly yeah, yeah because the, there was fish in the bird feeder uh, which they did take in the end anyway, so yeah they could have they could have taken that loon and got it down. I think the only thing that is weaker about the loon is it's a bit short on egg spaces. So you know you see they've already only got four down, and if if they get that loon down, that's only five egg spaces, and you know you you lay eggs twice and you're already full. So mm -hmm. it, it does kind of limit the options, but I'd imagine if they are going to get this Bob White down, that should at least you know alleviate some of that um, egg space pressure that they're looking at right now. Yeah, we have a little bit of tempo going on for Gist here, getting the Vol Swift. Yep. That means now if he keeps, he can freely keep digging in the deck and then later convert the, those cards to food. Yeah, exactly. So it's not a bad draw at all. Uh, no. I don't think he can afford to play both the Vol Swift and the Bulls Black. No, I was going to say, I think, you know, when you've got two tucking birds like that, you kind of have to pick the one that you want. And certainly I think the Swift is, is a stronger option at the moment because, you know, he's, he's really short on food. And if that's going to unlock getting more food from those tuck cards, uh, I mean, maybe, you know, they have got the Omnivore Expert, so that, that is going to make the, the Harrier a little, um, sorry, the, the, the Blackbird a little bit more attractive. But again, you know, that two food, you're only getting one at a time from that Night Heron, mm -hmm. it, it just feels a little bit slow. Yeah, they're probably going to take eggs here and see what comes up in the round two to it. Yep. Yeah, because they will be going first in that round two, so uh, I think I did see people talking about that in the chat as well. You know, he's he's just going to have to pray and, and hope for some nice birds in that round two tray, because it has felt a little bit slow. Um, they have got some nice points down on the board, obviously, in the, in the Night Heron, but yeah, I think it's... Yeah, it has been a bit slow going for them at the moment. Okay, Sachin is going to steal that end of one mm. goal just at the end. Yep. Yeah, I don't mind that. I think, uh, you know, they had the food to play the Bob White. Uh, if they no, did play the Galanule, play. it would have been forcing it down. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, you, you, if you can steal that end of round goal, um, that's another three points. So, it's already nice to get a, an early lead like that on your <laughs> opponent. Uh, that, that's painful, isn't it? Yep. Because that would have been in the tray. <laughs> that would have been in the tray. Oh, and here we go. Look at what we've got in the tray. Black chinned hummingbird. <laughs> the, the usual suspect. So do we have that on the bingo board? I'm not sure we do. <laughs> Surprisingly enough. Um, 
So seeing as it There's always seems to come up. Do you take the car up? Oh yeah, you took the car but here's the thing though, um, because Sachin already gets 5 eggs every time, mm. they're probably not going to give them that many eggs throughout no. the game. No, I mean, you look, they've got, they've got 8 more spaces, so they can lay eggs once and that's it. You know, maybe, okay, yeah, once they've got the Galen Yule down, maybe they'll, they'll start laying eggs a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, they're not going to get loads. And to be honest, when you are getting that many points, you kind of think, oh, right, I don't really care if my opponent gets one. Like, it's not that big of a deal. So, uh, it's not it's not super strong. I think the Hummingbird is, is a much nicer option. You know, they can, they can mm -hmm. get that down straight away. It's the Omnivore, so it meets their bonus card. Um, and, yeah, it's just going to give them more access to food. And, really, that's what they're struggling for at the moment. Not Hatch is definitely a good pick for Sachin as well. Mm. Yeah. Which wood is it when? Which wood is it that when you put out a hunt the birds you want? I think that's wood fifteen. <laughs> I think we. D I think. Uh, I think Grubenstein was asking about that that's, yesterday. That's a that's a different wood than wood sixteen. Yeah. No. We. I think we do need that. We need a proper. Um, you know, we need a full-on rule list somewhere, because uh, everyone knows about rule sixteen. That seems to happen <laughs> every other game. Um, but yeah, that's that's frustrating. I think that certainly the yeah, the, it it does happen more often than than you like seeing those those strong birds get tucked. Ooh, going for the star nest instead of the web breasted nut hatch. Yeah, interesting. Oh, really good birds there for mm. for gist, I think. Yep. Yeah, that black bird is it looks really nice. Uh, you know, with the night heron, that's going to help get them more points from the tucks and just you know eggs to at least discard. Yeah, and turn yeah into I mean, food, I'm not so. I'm not just saying that because it's a bird I like. But <laughs> Although that is partly why you're saying it. Yeah, but taking cards is good for cheese because then, yep. if you can take cards more, it means you can actually afford to play the blackbird and um, mm. for swift and potentially have a strong end game. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think the blackbird is nice. You know. They're not really generating many points or many resources from other habitats. So, you know, when you've got a strong, um, you've got a strong habitat already in the wetlands, you know, you want to try and add to that and, and increase your your point scoring potential. So, yeah, I I definitely agree. I think the the blackbird would be a good a good pickup here for Jesus. Yeah, definitely a better start to this round. Then mm. the last. Yeah. Um, I was surprised he didn't take it straight away, but at the same time, I don't think Sachin can even no. afford to take it. No, it's no one of those. Down. Exactly, it's one of those where, you know, your opponent could deny you, but you look at you look at their wetlands, you think, okay, it's not doesn't really work for them in terms of what they've already got set up. Um, and yeah, you, they'd have to waste a turn just taking that to deny the opponent. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting that Jis hasn't gone for it in the end. Um, I think that's quite a. That's quite an interesting move. I certainly would have looked at it, but they just went blind off the deck. So clearly, they're content with you know taking that risk and, and seeing what they can get from the from the top of the deck. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> In, yeah, that's the polite way of putting it. <laughs> I mean, it definitely felt like the better option to me yeah. at this stage of the game. And I'm yeah. also surprised they didn't take the wet breast nut hatch either, because that would have been a good second bird with the full suit. Yeah, I mean, I think the only the only thing I'm wondering is, are they going to get this Brewer's Blackbird down and just kind of go for this almost double pivot? Mm -hmm. So you swap between the wetlands and the, and the yeah, grasslands. Yeah, mixed engine. So, yeah, you know, the Blackbird's nice with the Omnivore. Um, and, yeah, it almost doesn't matter what cards they draw blind from the deck, because if they're just, just going to get tucked behind the, Blackbird, uh, behind the Brewer's Blackbird anyway, then, yeah, you, you're getting points either way. So I, I don't mind that. I think that can work quite nicely. It does seem like he might be... Ignoring the forest entirely. Mm. Yeah, but I think he can afford to do that. You know, when you got the hummingbird no, yeah, and the night heron, it it makes sense. Apparently, Sachin accidentally agreed to be streamed, so let's not be too mean. <laughs> I don't think we've been too mean. I was <laughs> I I was getting close to ticking the chat is harsher than commentators box because I think we've been really nice so far. So. Um, yeah, I'll I'll I haven't checked the bingo, let's see. No, we've had a couple. Uh, I ticked chat ignored for a significant amount of time because, um, yeah, I have been ignoring chat, so apologies. Uh, and you did definitely cut me off at least a couple of times, but again, no hard feelings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, so Sachin has managed to get this galleon down, which I think is nice. Um, you know, this is a kind of, 
a really strong position for the Galenial because you can feel safe in giving your opponent cards when I think you know Geest is going to be in that in that wetlands a lot because it's their only food source so you know they're going to be drawing lots of cards anyway I, I certainly wouldn't mind throwing a few more their way if it's going to mm -hmm. give me access to uh, to extra cards as well yeah but at the same time Geest doesn't mind getting extra cards either because it's only going to fuel his blackbird yeah so. Yeah, I think I think he's just not going to be short on cards anyway, though, because you know he's getting at least two a turn from his own wetlands. He can't activate that grasslands too many times because of the limited egg spaces. So he's really going to need to go into that wetlands just to at least get food. Um, so yeah, it's 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 an interesting position, <laughs> completely ignoring the forest with a with a wetlands like this, but. Um, I've, I still feel like that Blackbird, it's not too late, you know, we're only going into round three. And it's that's definitely just gonna not give them, too late, yeah, it's, especially because they currently have no way to stop using the wetlands, so yeah. no, it's not too late at all. Yeah, and you know, you might look at it and think, oh well, that's just going to be more tucks behind that that the Blackbird isn't going to take, but you know, that's if that's their fourth wetland bird, that actually gives them access to the extra cards anyway, so I don't think it's, it's really going to you know, hamper them too much. I, yeah. I definitely would still be going for it, but I, th I wonder if they're going to try and get this greed down now, going for the fish instead because of that star nest. Mhm. Mm I mean, it's as as Tayway just pointed out. They they have a negative point engine now. Is it still an engine if it's yeah. a negative <laughs> point engine? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's negative, but it fuels a potential six point engine. Um, in the in the grasslands, and it is getting them food, so I don't mind it too much. But yeah, you know, if you'd added that blackbird, suddenly it becomes a positive point engine, while also getting mm -hmm. you cards mm -hmm. and food and more cards tucked behind that blackbird. So yeah, it's not uh, it's not great when you are losing points every time you activate that wetlands. But um, also means you don't necessarily have to bounce between the grass mm. and the wetland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think at the moment they are kind of forced to to go back to that grassland every so often because yeah, it's scoring them points, but they need eggs as well. You know that night heron can't supply itself, um, whereas at least yeah. yeah, if that black bird was down, it could it could fuel that. Um, but they've gone for the grebe. I think certainly they've got an eye on those on those end of round goals with the star nest. Sachin has a very standard, very safe board here. Yeah. It's, uh, it's but I, I mean, don't mind a, that. It's a I really think it's good, good. No, it's a really yeah. good board there. Yeah, I think it's, it's good. Really went well up for for the, the end. Yeah, I think I think they've got good card draw. So uh, you know, like with Geest at the start of this round, they'll be going first in round three. So they can wait and see what comes up, and yeah, easily pick that up. And they've got good egg source. You know, five points a turn in your grass is always nice. And mm -hmm. and even in their forest, you know, some of those excess cards they've got. You know, they're probably not going to look to play both of those migratory birds, so you can turn that into extra food and, and you don't feel like you're wasting anything. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one thing that's worth pointing out is that they're actually doing quite well on bird points. Mm. You know, the, the way it starts, the way you four points, seven yeah. with the guy in your, the... Exactly. Yeah, I think uh, I think they're a little bit short on their bonus card, uh, although the kinglet in the tray is quite a nice one to help them towards that, so I think if they can potentially you know, look at using that to double another small bird, then suddenly they've got the four they needed and, you know, you take that lower threshold. I think three points is, is still nice um, from a bonus yeah, yeah. card like that. But, yeah, be interested to see if they do go for Kinglet and then maybe, you know, go for a couple of off, off the top of the deck. And really, I think they just need, you know, some more big point birds to kind of add to what they've already got because, yeah, they've got enough point scoring from that, from that grass and it's really think, certainly for round three. I think the hook is definitely worth taking as well just to try and build up the, the grassland just to get more eggs and you know it's six points could mm. get you a few points yeah and it it's a it's a platform nest as well for this end of round goal so uh, yeah. it's not it's not a bad option um, I'm interested as to the as to the swift going down I guess it's kind of like the grebe in that they're, they're looking at that star nest um, and yeah hoping hoping they can use that I think that does tie them on the on the platform nests at least for the moment but yeah, I think you're right. I think the hawk in the in the tray is certainly a nice a nice pickup. I'd be surprised if Jis goes for it, and yeah, he he, he doesn't in the end. But Jis has picked up the same bird three times. He picked up the Sand Hill Quay, the <laughs> yes. Kadakus, and the Whistling Duck. <laughs> yeah, when the game wants you to when the game wants you to discard food for Tux, it's going to keep going. So um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I, I'm I'm intrigued as to why he picked up the Kinglet because I'm not sure he's really got much 
in terms of birds in his hand that he'd look to he'd look to double in that forest. But I guess it's you know a cheap way of getting more more points down. It's not going to cost you an egg, so <laughs> um, I guess he was just gambling on what else he could he could get from the deck really. The waxwing is definitely not bad as well mm. for the grassland. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they get loads of cherries from the hummingbird, so they could get it down straight away. And like you say, they've, you know, they're, they're not going to be short on cards to tuck. You know, you already look at their hand; it, they've got sort of six or seven spare cards for tucking. Um, yeah. And yeah, gaining gaining three a turn, while also getting all that food. I think absolutely it makes sense to get the waxwing down. It's going to get you points. It's going to get you more food. And yeah, I, I don't think that's a bad shot here at all. Mm -hmm. They were saying I think Sachin has a good chance haven if they play it safe. No, mm. I agree. I'm not saying play. I'm not saying play it safe as a negative. You know, mm. it's no, no, absolutely. I think I think they've I think they've done they they played really solidly. You know, they, I think they've got the right birds down at the right time. You know, maybe that Galanul went down a little bit late, um, but you know they still managed to get it down at a time that, that really helped them, and and they built up that wetlands nicely. And yeah, and they they prioritized the end of round goal. Which exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think you know if they can, if they can look to 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 snatch this last end of round goal as well, um, or, the, or this this third one at least, um, I think that will help them. But yeah, really, I think a lot of it is going to come down to you know what they can get from the deck. You know, like I said before, if they can if they can get some really nice big point birds, you, know, you look at all the food they've got in their hand and how easy it is for them to get even more food from the forest. Uh, you know, you, if they draw some of those big bonus point birds from the deck. They should have absolutely no trouble getting those down in these mm -hmm. last couple of rounds. Um, that's sort of, uh, Tay said, use Waxwing to play for Catbird. That's sort of what I was expecting from um, mm. Gist, because then you can slowly build up your um, Grassland engine without going to the water too often. Yeah, and I you, mean, you carry on getting points to eventually play the King Bird with another, the Kinglet with another bird, which. You know, as Chad White fully pointed out, does do ecologist. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And yeah, I mean, can you imagine if, if he's going to get that that catbird down in the grasslands and suddenly you're getting three tucks a turn? Um, you know, he's got all these he's got all these less than optimal birds in his hand that he looked to get rid of. So um, I certainly yeah. don't think that'd be a bad idea. Well, he can probably yeah, he can take cards now actually once more and just with that get enough food to play the catbird immediately. Gotta right. give credit to Cheese for the innovative board. <laughs> <laughs> That's one one way of putting it. Yeah, it's certainly unusual. You know, be I think being able to avoid the forest like this completely, um, it's 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 interesting. But it has worked okay for them. I think they've not really. There's I don't think there might have been a couple of times where I've looked at them and thought, ah, oh, they needed a couple more food here. But actually, I think they've you know manage to manage to manage it quite nicely here and yeah certainly they've got good food access now in mm. both mm. the grasslands and the wetlands so it doesn't matter what action they take there they're going to get some food at least the only um, controversial decision about this ball at the end is going to be uh, whether they should have played the blackbird i think mm. Mm. well you know what if they lose we can come back to that and and point to that decision as you know they should have <laughs> they should have played the blackbird um, yeah. But a couple of nice pickups there, oh, you know, nice, and the finch. Nice. So I was, That's perfect. I was just thinking they need a good, yeah, good forwards because now they're set for the for the end. They have the entire end game exactly. sorted. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a couple of those birds there, you know, those are kind of the, the birds really that that Sachi would have been looking to get. So you know, those nine point birds are going mm -hmm. to the wetlands. They've got all that space. They've got all that food access. Uh, would help with the end of round goals as well. So. A uh, bit unfortunate for them that that Jesus picked those up, but yeah, that Cassin's Finch is is perfect. You know, they can they can double that up with the Kinglet. It's going to help for the Ecologist bonus, um, and yeah, it's gonna it's gonna give a bonus card of of its own. So they'll just have to hope they get something nice there. Yeah, it does look like. Um, well, no, Sachin hasn't taken the Furnace Hawk, mm. so for now they're tied on the end of round goal. Uh, but Sachin is almost definitely going to get the last one. Yeah, yeah, it does look like you know with that Bob White and the uh, and the Sparrow now as well. They've got so all they're going to be those, tied actually. Yeah, they've got, well they've they've got all of those ground nest spots. But yeah, I think this I think this third one they will tie. Um, I can't remember who won the second one. I think that might have been was that Sachin Jeez as well. No, Jeez was that won Jeez? the second one. He had six bird down. Sachin had five. Right. 
Okay, but yeah, you know, with Sachin taking that first one, I think if 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 you can if you can win two of them, lose one and tie the other, I think you take that. You know, you still have a, a slight advantage there. Mm -hmm. We might have some streaming issues just on G's end. Uh, I've seen he is uh, <laughs> stuck on this loading screen, um, so I think he's just going to try and um, back out and 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 get his perspective back up. Um, I did see earlier that Monster Couch did announce that there would be some maintenance work being done um, on the <laughs> server, so that wasn't supposed to be until tomorrow. Um, I'm hoping it hasn't come through um, <laughs> early because uh, this might, you know, bring a premature end to the stream. Um, but yeah, just imagine some nice. Um, you know, Might as well check the bingo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. That's, that's, that's not a, that's not a bad that's not a bad point. Good time to check things. So we have a, a few ticked off. Um, so oh, such in such in drop off. I think I think they look like they were stuck on the loading screen as well. Um, so yeah, might uh, might might be not something just on Jesus' end. Um, but yeah, we will just we will just wait and see. Um, so who is this? This is Geist. Okay, it looks like Geist is back up at least. Um, I will get Sachin Street back up as well because I think I think they are also back. Um, yes. All right. Okay, we are back. Yeah, have them. Good. So hopefully that wasn't um, <laughs> a sign of things to come. Um, but yeah, that does at least look like um, that's gone through. And yeah, unsurprisingly, maybe, um, you know, Jeester's Jeester's got that catbird down. So um, yeah, they've, uh, they've 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 got some good opportunities here for for doubling those tucks. And yeah, they can either choose to get more more eggs from the blackbird or more cherries from the waxwing. But yeah, I think based, I on, based on the birds, I would say probably copy the the hive, you know. Uh, well, that's that's not a bad option either. I guess it depends how much, in terms of the tucking, they think they can afford to do. You know, we're with fifty fifty on the pod who's uh, yeah. going to win the game. Dead dead heat. So four of you think G's is going to win. Four of you think Sachin. To be honest, I don't know who to pick. Uh, this yeah, is, this I have, is I have no idea. This is feeling really close. I think G's has got some nice options. So like we said before, you know, the the kinglet and the finch is going to be so strong for the net last round. And yeah. yeah, getting food isn't going to be a problem, so could well come down to um, what they can what they can get from that bonus card. But yeah, looks like they are going for the extra food. Um, we just definitely have some other options to play. I was going to mention the the woodpecker that just flew away because it does ecologist and omnivore. That, that's a good point. Um, yeah, but they also still have the the swan. Which I think the swan is what he's going to look to get down because you know that's that's nine points. With the, with the with the omnivore even after um, that egg cost so you know that kind of feels too too good to ignore really and I, yeah you know he could probably look to draw birds at least once and and you know at least get one seed um, using their night heron so it's not oh, a bad option. Very, very house, nice, very nice house friends house friends not a bad pick up there either so um, yeah like you said they've got some <laughs> they've got some really interesting options um, and you know maybe some difficult decisions to be made here in terms of which of these birds do you prioritise getting down, and and which of them do you just tuck? Um, you know, running that running that grassland's engine. Yeah, I think the fate of the game might reside on this this single turn here from Sachin. I think what you're right. What bird are they going to pick up? Oh, I lost the stream. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. You know, they they're going to see four cards if they can get some nice big point birds. So I'm thinking, you know, if they can get King Rail, if they can get Whooping Crane. You know, even something like the prairie chicken to go in the grasslands. You know, some of these big point bonus birds. Uh, yeah, yellow, th the, yellow throat is yes. probably not what you're looking for. Um, Hermit thrush is nice though. That's a that's a good pickup. They've already got the food for that. Um, is it is it small? Is it small? It is. It's thirty centimeters. Thirty centimeters. centimeters. It's so. almost as if they were listening to me. I said yeah. it's small and it just hovered. Over. <laughs> yeah. So I think because I think they're already on four. So if they get the thrush and the flycatcher down, they both meet it. That'll bump them up a level. Um, and yeah, I think they've at least got a couple of cavity and star nests, so um, they'll get some eggs from that. So that's not a bad option. And you know, even after that, they've got some extra food. But running that grasslands, if they get that third bird down, 
or even you know with these migratory birds it'll be their fifth bird um, that's going to just at least unlock extra egg options uh, when they are running that grass and so yeah not not an amazing pickup there but I think it's perfectly workable you know seven points not, from not the thrushes is very bad. nice yeah probably put both of them in the grass then just so you unlock the the fifth place yeah yeah I think I think that's I think that's the play you know if you're if you are going to play both thrush and flycatcher you're going to get a couple of turns laying eggs so it doesn't matter if you have to pay one extra egg playing that bird because you'll you'll get it back from from discarding the extra food anyway yeah yeah but if you move both the birds in the middle anyway you're gonna spend one egg fuel on the black skimmer one egg fuel on the hermit thrush so well actually i'm not yeah. sure if they're gonna pay the black skimmer. i was gonna say is black skimmer something you'd look to get down i think they probably could just about afford to um but they're probably better off just laying eggs as, as long as it's, they've got the capacity for it yeah it's a five point play so it's not bad and uh it's gonna depend on egg capacity a little bit yeah i think just trying to I'm just trying to work out I think they will have enough you know once they've played these two birds obviously the flycatcher will give them some eggs um, but I think they I think they might just about have enough um, to at least get away with with laying eggs twice so um, we'll have to wait and see um, hopefully that's just gonna say hopefully we've not got more issues um, as such as stream drops off um, but yeah they hopefully will, will be back with us soon and it's not their turn anyway, so you know, we're not <laughs> we're not missing anything too exciting. Yeah, right. I don't know. I, th I think copying the Harrier might be better just because it means you don't have to go to the wetland as often. Because now he basically have to do one action of each every time. I uh, I think I think he's worked this out okay though, because I think if he's yeah, gonna yeah. go, if he's it depends how many of these double birds he's gonna get down. You know, are you go would you go Wren plus Kinglet plus? Finch, I think he probably has enough food to do that. Um, but then that's one turn. You've then got two left. You know, are you gonna are you gonna try and get this swan down, or are you just gonna laying, lay eggs? You know, what's the what's what what are the options there? Playing the win is only a two point play, which is about as much as tucking the win. So yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 two points. Yeah, it's 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 three points minus the egg, which yeah, it's not. You know, is it is it is it worth that food? I don't know. Maybe it is. It depends really if they can. I think if that food could be put to better use, getting the swan down. I think that's the real decision. You know, if you can, if yeah. you can, if you can somehow cobble together enough food to get your trumpet swan down for nine points, I think that's the priority here. Um, but yeah, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. You know, it's all going to come down to what they do on this turn, and and that will. Seems really it seems unlikely to unless they take food because it's going to cost them four food, well, all of their food to play those three birds if they're going to play all three. Mm. Yeah, but it looks like that's what they are doing, um, and yeah, it would be a it would be a big gamble to go for food here, not seeing any seeds in the in the feeder. So uh, that's not a bad bonus card though. Bird but that is that is a good bonus card. Yeah. Well. <laughs> you take that. You take that. Four points from a blind one with two turns to go. Um, that's that's always nice to see. Mm -hmm. All right, I think things are a bit more straightforward. Like we said for Sachin before, you know, I think they'll look to get this flycatcher down. Um, it's got quite a few egg spaces itself, so that should help, um, yeah. you know, alleviate some pressure. And yeah, it'll get a few points on its own, but it is going to unlock those extra eggs. And yeah, a couple of turns laying eggs at the end for seven points. I think that's always a really strong position to be in when you could score seven points from each of those last two turns and yeah I think it is going to max out um, this this bonus card as well potentially which which is always nice I think G's last game is probably going to be um, I was trying to work out which option is the option that scores the most points it's probably going to be taking X twice even though you miss couple mm. takes um, yeah yes yeah, skip, skip the wax wing copy the harrier take X twice and double do the blackbird twice yeah yeah, I mean, if you you know you even if even if copying that Harrier only gets one success out of the two, again that's still seven points. Um, mm -hmm. If you if you skip the Waxwing and do the Blackbird both times, so they certainly got the egg space for that. And yeah, you know, like I was just saying for Sachin, if you can if you can score seven points on those last two turns, um, that's that's always a strong position to be in. And certainly that feels like a better option than running that wetlands just to get cards to tuck. You know, I don't think I don't think that's really worth doing at this yeah, point yeah i think just has this says um 
someone in the chat. I think I'm inclined to agree. Um, mm. I don't think Sachin got the draw they needed to no. really pull back. No, I think. Uh, whereas this, you know, we, we sort of have to say it. He, he did get good cards in the later half of the game. Yeah, I he, think you're right. He's sort of. Yeah, I think some unfortunate draws certainly in that in that last round for Sachin. You know, they've they've made the best out of what they've been given. Um, I yeah. don't really think they could have done too much more than that. Um, and yeah, certainly a nice bonus card for GC at the end has helped. And mm -hmm. six points from the Ecologist. Um, I think they've got at least a couple from the Omnivore. And then obviously, you know, as we saw, four points from their, from their bird counter as well. So yeah, you know, they've got some big point birds down. They scored you know, they really, really yeah. strongly in the, in the end of round goals and, and bonus cards. And they're going to have a lot of eggs as well. So. Yeah, the they're, they're about even on the end of round goals, but Chis just yeah. has so much more like eggs, bonus cards, and tech cards. Yeah, I mean, you know, even just bonus cards, you look at Chis and he's going to get, you know, high teens at least there. Whereas I think Sachin, mm -hmm. I think Sachin is getting, I think if they can max this three. bonus card out, yeah, three or six, it's <laughs> basically three or six, which is which is a big difference if you miss that on. Yeah, just a little sneak preview of their score there. Um, it's it's going to be great. difficult. Yeah. No, they might. They might be able to sneak into the 90s here. Uh, I think probably high 80s is, is what they're looking at, though. So, and certainly from G Sport, you know that looks like a that looks like a 90 or or, or 100 yeah. points certainly if, if he can play these last two turns right. I just want to clarify what I said earlier because because I said the you know on the one hand yes G did pull out some cards that were useful to him but credits goes to him for mm. actually managing to to use those cards to the best effect because yeah. if you look at his board nothing is outrageously powerful and nope. he just built himself a really good board with what they were given yeah I think I think he always had good card draw so you know he built all that went wetlands really nicely and yeah I think as soon as you're able to get birds like the blackbird and the waxwing that are going to get you tuck cards and eggs and food as well um, you know knowing when to when to use those I think certainly they They've done the right thing there, and yeah, looks like they're they're following our advice and skip the waxwing, <laughs> copy yeah. the harrier, and, and get those tucks on the blackbird, which yeah, certainly feels like the the strong play at the moment. It's going to be like about twenty eggs. How many tucks does he have? Nah, we'll see. We'll see. I don't want to count. I don't want to count. <laughs> keep the keep the surprise. I was going to say you don't want to don't want to spoil it for the viewers. You know, we, um, we and we've got to hope that both players are gonna are gonna let the score count up and not just skip to the end. Yeah, um, yeah, but she's the, definitely the definitely closed this one out here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think he felt a little bit behind, you know, maybe towards the end of that second round. Um, but certainly, you know, like you said, he did the best with the birds that he was given. Uh, he's built something up really nice in the in the grasslands here at the end of the game to get a lot of points. So um, certainly feels like some some strong turns at the end. And yeah, I think it it, it feels like it's going to do enough for him. Maybe they're gonna go four 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 on the heels. Oh, yes. lovely! <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> that's what you want to see. Yeah, that Harrier, <laughs> that Harrier with seven hunts. That's uh, that's nice. You always like to see that. The waxwing combo, the waxwing catbird combo was mm. massive. It is. Yeah. I mean, I'm always excited when I have waxwing and I pick up <laughs> another cherry bird. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I I saw you talking before about the the hummingbird and the waxwing, and we've got both of them down on the same board for G. So he's yeah. certainly not been short of cherries this game. See, I think that was the turning point when G's yeah. got the hummingbird. That's Definitely. a cooperative bird. Immediately, the, the game started going better for him. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, he f he felt more at home with the co-op bird down. So. All right, scores coming up, and yeah, you know those bonus cards, points. Um, Sachin brings it back a little bit. Um, but I think Jeez is just going to have more eggs um, and certainly felt like he had more tucks. Ooh, a little bit. In, yeah, he brought it back with the eggs, well. but yeah, I think I think those tuck cards and yeah. there you go, 105. Uh, that's a very impressive score. Uh, very, very nicely played yeah. from Jeez. Cons considering where he was, like I said, sort of, you know, halfway, halfway through round two, um, it, you know, it felt a little bit weak. Um, but yeah, certainly, certainly did well to, to bring it back with very, the end. Very good demonstration on how to stay flexible because I think mm, absolutely. Many, I think some people would have really struggled to play this hand, and he played it really well. Yeah. Yeah. Finished with 105. Yeah. Very well played, and yeah, like I said before, this this is a best of three series, so uh, don't go anywhere yet. 
we still have at least one more game to come up so uh, if Geest can take that game then they will advance through into the next round. Uh, on the other hand if Sachin can get the win then we go through into a deciding game three so and I'm, I'm just gonna leave my place to to Groove. Hello Groove. Indeed. Hello. Afternoon. Well, actually, it's still oh, morning wait, for you, isn't it? <laughs> well, before I leave, I just wanted to say uh, uh, this is the Vuye Duck tournament. Thank you. Right, that's the reference. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna soundbite that. And any time I need to refer to the tournament name, I'll just, I'll just play that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and get a, get a clip of that because I think that 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 Vuye is is the new Uwu. <laughs> Uh, we couldn't, we, we, we uh, couldn't get through a stream without someone saying it, could we? Do we need to no. get Taewei on on chat just to oh, say? Oh, please no, please no. Let's let's move on. Elsie <laughs> Elsie can make a an, an Ubu cop car and a and a and a Vuye ambulance, and they can we can do like a poll. For, we could do we could do a full animation movie actually. I think <laughs> just just, just with Taewei sound effects. Oh God. I'll leave that to uh, someone else. <laughs> I I'll, I'll leave you to it. Anyway. See you. Uh, all right. Cheers, mother love. <laughs> all right. How did you find that game one, Groove? What, what, what are your thoughts on that? I think, uh, you know, Kay, uh, Kay nailed it. I mean, that was in the chat. You know, that was really uh, just a, a superb do uh, job by Geist yep. of, of just kind of, you know, Playing, uh, <laughs> playing, playing what you get. You know, there was uh, I played in a, a poker game with this this guy a, a few years ago, and and things. Uh, you know, he was he was starting to play a lot of a lot of hands that maybe you're not supposed to play. <laughs> and uh, you know, he was just somebody asked him why he kept playing that stuff, and he said, you know, you got to play the the stuff they deal to you. Now, you he yep. used a different a different word than stuff, but. Uh, <laughs> But just I don't I don't want to get cop card. Uh, I think I've, I've absolutely gone not. through my 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 cop cars for the for the month. But <laughs> you're already uh, over your quota. <laughs> oh god! Oh, way over, way over. But yeah, I mean you got you do you have to play what what you know what you get dealt. Yeah, That's no, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think you know that this this was a really great showcase uh, as as Tug Cash pointed out of you know being able to to to, to score strongly even even with. You know, maybe birds that a lot of players would consider not that strong. You know, when we when we saw the breakdown of the score, they 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 scored well in all categories. You know, they got a lot of bird points. They scored well from their bonus cards. They did reasonably well in those end of round goals, and a lot of eggs and a lot of tuck cards. So you know, when you're able to score strongly, um, like he did in in all of those categories, um, then yeah, it's you know it, you, you always give yourself a chance. And yeah, such an impressive score. Um, considering the, the early game setup was a little bit unconventional um, and yeah but they, they really managed to make it work so yeah um, and I think game. and it's not that it's not that Sachin did, did poorly you know but no no uh, the reason we're you know the, the way Geist played was just was just a perfect example of why when people ask us you know or what are what are good birds and mm -hmm. what are bad birds and and the answer is always you know this is it, it, it depends right it's such a situational game and and it's you know it's it's what's a good bird for you yep. know for the situation or what's a good move for the situation and so you know i mean if you it's it's kind of like asking you know what's a good restaurant well if you know if if you hate indian food then <laughs> <laughs> then you don't think an Indian restaurant's a good restaurant. Me, I'm gonna look for you know to see if they'll rent me a room. Hmm. No, I think that's a good point. And you know, some of these birds that that, that everyone would normally refer to as the really strong birds. You know, if you're Geese and you pick up a Franklin's gull in that round three, that's useless to you really at that point. You know, I don't really think maybe they could have made it work, but you know, they they they, they drew these kind of birds like the waxwing, and you, you don't really see these play too often. Um, and you know the black chinned hummingbird, which always seems to come up, and and you know everyone's got an opinion of it, but actually they managed to make that work really well with the with the wetlands they got it's got set up. So, yeah, certainly a, a strong performance with you know not not necessarily such strong birds. Yeah, yeah, and I mean it's it's you know like uh, the the tier list you know video that that 
uh, that you and you and Tuck and Cash did of you know the 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 early game birds. I mean, even even that, it's it's still mm. just the guide, right? Like if you know the 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 hooded warbler, which I'm I'm I imagine you guys put as uh, C tier, if I remember right. Um, I'm not sure. I still don't have that list committed to memory. I apologize, <laughs> but. Uh, but uh, you know the the hooded warbler is maybe not something that you're really looking to play in the beginning. But if your opponent drops a Phoebe, that's mm. that's you know in many situations an instant pickup. Yeah, no, you're right. It, it's it's all situational, and yeah, like you say, it's not just situational based on what you're able to access and what you're able to play, but also what your opponent does. So um, yeah, certainly, you know what what is a great bird in one situation is not going to work the other way around. So. Yeah. All right. I think Jis is getting us started here for game two, and he will be going first. So let's have a look and see what he's got in his hand. Um, that's not too bad of a start. I think the the Tanaga and the Maganta are both both nice options. Um, it's a shame no grub in the tray to to get that Tanaga down quickly. Um, but you know, it's a strong a strong forest bird, and they've got a strong wetland bird to go alongside it. So um, yeah, not too bad at all, really. No, I mean, and there's, uh, you know, you look at, look at the tray, uh, you know, the ga the gallinule is is not something that you know Jesus mm -hmm. is going to be going to be looking to pick up. Nope. Uh, no, the the sparrow, it's you know that's that's a little. Exciting. I don't think Jesus is going to have any interest in that. The, you know, uh, so yeah, I think the the tanager and the the merganser. Are, are you know birds that that he's going to be looking at for sure yeah yeah i mean you know certainly you look at the other you look at the other three birds in their hand and they're not really the kind of birds you look to keep at the start of the game so um you know i suppose he could he could ignore the tanaga and and look to pick up that screech owl in the tray you know it's only a single food um and it is at least different food to what the maganza takes so they could they could always keep a rodent and look to get that down um, but yeah, it's it's a really unfortunate position just having no no worms in the feeder because normally that that tanager early on, you know, you pick up a worm, you get it down, and suddenly you're able to get two or three through the turn, and it's such a strong position. Uh, you know, maybe they might look to force it down anyway and just just overpay slightly. Um, but it, yeah, it's 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 always a bit of a shame when something like that happens early in the game. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, even if he even if he is looking at the at the screech owl, let's say, okay, well, well, you've got, you know, you got to keep fish, rodent, mm. and uh, and a grub, and and you only keep, you know, you you still you only get to keep one more food that way, which yeah. which of course is the wheat, and then look at what you're left with in the, you know, in yeah. the feeder. It's it's just kind of tough, like you say, without the grubs in the tray. Yeah. All right, that is not too bad of a starting hand either, I think, for Sachin. Um, again, you know, maybe not such a great choice in the in the wetlands, but uh, broadwing hawk is nice for the forest. I think that's a good option. Um, you know, even that bunting, they could look to get that down. That's that's quite an easy bird to get down early in the game with the three different food costs. So um, yeah, certainly they they've got some good options here. I think, Sachin. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, they've got uh, just as far as that that first. Uh, end of round goes. I mean, not that they'll know this until mm -hmm. they see the Merganser, of course, but they don't. They don't really have a clean path to that. Yep. Uh, but uh, but yeah, for sure. I mean, the the bunting, the 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 broadwing talk, which, as we know from from uh, talking Cash's conspiracy, is is almost a guaranteed successful hunt. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, a couple of. Uh, couple of nice bonus cards there as well mm, mm. yeah I, I i will be interested to see what they keep um they are looking at the bunting you know it's not uh, it's not a great bird for you to set up for the bunting you know for similar reasons uh for geese you know just not having those worms there uh, i think it is still a, a a strong bird though and as long as you're as long as you're you know occasionally going to the bird feeder to make sure that you've reset it um to give you those options of getting more food then uh, it can work nicely and yeah i think was it the omnivore bonus card they had which 
makes omnivore sense. Omnivore or, or ecologist, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So certainly, if if you're if you've got the omnivore, I think that that Megantha becomes a really strong keep. You know, it's got it's already going to be seven points with that bonus card for a couple of food and and all of those egg spaces as well. Um, that's certainly a yeah a strong bird for them to have at the start of the game. Yeah, and I like this this setup. So what they're going for is they're going to play, I presume, the bunting in the grassland, and then the bunting will give them a free cherry, assuming that mm -hmm. Jeeves doesn't take it, which he's probably not going to, yeah. uh, from you know from Sachin's perspective. And then so they take the fish with yep. uh, with the cherry, can get that merc answer down, and that's that's a pretty quick start and and a good amount of points as well. Yeah, I mean they could they could also go bunting in the in the forest. I mean I I personally find it stronger to, in the in the grasslands, particularly in an opener like this. Uh, I think you are right. You know it's a bit of a risk if you can't get that cherry. But um, yeah, I don't I don't really see any reason for Jeeves to take it. Particularly you know if you're in Satchin's position, you just see him take the screech owl. Um, but yeah, if he's gone for the fish now, that might lean towards him playing the Baganza. Um, first, which I think would be an interesting play, but um, yeah, I guess we'll we'll see if he if he's going to risk it and, and and play the bunting now, or or if he's going to play it safe and make sure he gets that food. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting. I wonder if he's because you think they kept the bunting mm. looking to looking to play it right. Yeah. So and they kept the right food for it. So yeah, they go. I think that's okay. I mean, obviously, you know, when you see your opponent play the bunting and you see there's a cherry they could get for free. Um, you know, you, if you're GC, you might lean toward taking that, but I think they they kind of need the fish, um, and they're not even paying attention to it anyway because they want the hawk from the tray, which is not a bad pickup. You know, it works oh. with their bonus card, um, but yeah, that catcher. much nicer bird comes up in the tray, and yeah, I do wonder if you're if you're Sachin, do you do you sort of you know go off go off path here a little bit and, and pick that up, or or do you leave it and hope that it's still there by the time you've got that Mercanza down and drawn cards again? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, uh, Jeez, you know, Jeez does have a bird down in the wetlands, or, or excuse me, in the in the forest already, yeah. and just picked up another one. So maybe Sachin's thinking, yeah. well, I can get away with with leaving it there. I I, th I think that that's that would be my my take on this. I, if I'm in Sachin's position, I think you know he's already got one down. He's just picked up the hawk, and he's got the rodent for it. He's not got a worm. So even if he picks up that gnat catcher. It's just slowing down that tempo so much. And, you know, do you really need three forest birds so early in the game? I'm not sure you do. And you know, if you're GC, you're not going to spend a whole turn just to deny a, a bird like that from your opponent. It does feel a little bit of a waste. So um, looks like they might be going for it, but I certainly would be risking it here and yeah, get that against down first. So at least I have the option of getting more cards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, being able to because with what they do, they they can. You know they can lay eggs, pick up the cherry, lay down the merganser, yeah, uh, and then you know with the eggs they just got they'd, they'd be exactly. able to pull up two two cards on their next draw. So yeah, yeah, and really you know I think they might even be in a position where they they need to start looking at that sparrow because um, you know you look at Jeeves' board and you think okay, obviously we know he's got the he's got the merganser which which I would assume is going to go down you know early enough in this first round for it to count. Um, Know, for the, for those eggs but yeah they have they have gone for it i think that is a that is quite a bold move considering they haven't got the the worm access at the moment but i guess they're just gambling that you know at some point once jeest has, has reset that bird feeder enough times um that they are at least able to to get a worm from their bunting and yeah hopefully get that net catcher down well you know what they you know what they could do flynn they could they could lay eggs take the cherry brute force the gnat catcher and then hope yep. the fish is still there and, and yeah, that that's true. Give them enough food. Yeah, it's, that's that's not a bad shout. Like you say, if, if the fish is still there, then you take that and, and use the worm as your wild. Um, again, you know, it feels a bit weird paying for a, a single worm food with uh, with a cherry and a fish, which are normally much harder to get hold of. Um, but yeah, I think I think to be honest, they can feel safe knowing that a, a, a worm is going to come up at some point. You know, you see your opponent. They've, all they've got is two birds down in their forest and what a single food you know they're gonna need to start gaining food at some point so um, again I'd probably be gambling on this and let them reset the bird feeder and yeah just hope that there's a there's a worm in there next time I need to lay eggs and I can pick that with the bunting and you know I've saved myself a turn yeah it looks like and it looks like that's what they've done and I, I think we'd uh, we'd both agree with that move for sure yeah 
yeah, I certainly, you know, looking at both players at the moment, I think they are both in nice positions. If uh, if Jeez can get a worm on this reroll and uh, and get them against a down fairly cheaply, there you go. That's that's a nice option for them. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I really like I really like Sachin's setup. I mean, I <laughs> I am a big fan of the indigo bunting in the grasslands, so uh, you know, I make. I make no secret of my bias there. I think it is a it is a really strong early early in the game, mm. and it's helped them so far because you know they've already managed to get some food from that from the bunting to get them against a down while laying eggs. So they score points, and they've not you know really had to waste too many turns picking up a single food, which always feels a little bit slow in this early game. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, and. Uh... Yeah, in fact, I, I think the uh, the indigo bunting showed up on your on your players card the other day, right? When you uh, when you you won the the champion of champions or whatever it was. It's my it's my favorite bird, so yeah, like I say, make I make no secret of my bias towards towards the bunting. Uh, I think it is I think it is a, a really nice bird, particularly in this game. Oh, um, that's that's not a bad pull, omnivore bird as well, um, and yeah. In theory, at least, they should they should have no problems um, getting hold of that from uh, you know if they if they're going to get food from their bunting or if they're going to get food from their from their gnat catcher in the forest. You know, I think getting that king rail down shouldn't really take too much effort uh, for Sachin at this point. You know, it's a nice bird to get. Yeah, those those uh, those bonus card birds that also qualify for your bonus cards are yeah. always nice. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know you play the king rail, and it gives you the fishery manager or something, and and suddenly you've got those two birds there that are meeting both of them, and yeah, that's that you know if you can keep your options open like that, that's uh, that's always a nice position to be in. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt, and of course they got uh, they got the the successful uh, fishing trip on the one die. Mm -hmm. It's always uh, it's always nice when you're on the uh, you know on the on the taking end of that. Exactly. Not gonna, not gonna talk about any conspiracy theories though, because uh, it's the wrong channel for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're not really, you're not as much of a, of a tin foil guy, I Absolutely think. Absolutely not. Uh, no, uh, I, I prefer a rational way of thinking than, more, more so than, than, than what, than what Terry does on his channel. So, <laughs> but it's what it is. Okay, so we're shaping up here. Mm. It looks like. Geese does as we expected is going to take that that first tend around. Yep. Yeah, I think there there wasn't really a whole lot um, that that Sachin could have looked to do um, in that position. You know, you see what well, as soon as you see your um, as soon as you see your opponent play a bird like that, um, you know, you kind of think, okay, well they're going to take this. There's not a whole lot I can do. You know, maybe if they if they picked up that. Um, that sparrow in the tray, I think it is, that, that has the ground nest. Um, you know, they could have potentially let get that down, but I think it would have disrupted what they tried to do. You know, it would have made made getting that Maganza down a bit slower, and, and certainly I think they made the right choice getting that down and just at least unlocking the options for more birds. Okay. Oh, now that that cardinal just mm. happens to fit with the food that they picked yep. up perfectly. Yeah, I'm 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 thinking the cardinal's nice. I'm thinking the kingfish is nice as well. You know, it's another omnivore bird. Um, you know, your opponent's only got one wetland bird down, so you can probably count on at least one or two more free fish from that. And you know, if that free fish is gonna enable you getting that king rail down a lot easier, then absolutely, I think I think that's a good option. But yeah, cardinal. You know, they they've lucked out really already having the food for that. You can play that. You can draw food, and you know maybe even you get that gnat catcher down as well. And suddenly that's four points, uh, four food, sorry, from your from your forest, which is uh, is a really strong position to be in. No doubt. And two of those food, uh, because you know the cardinal and the the gnat catcher both provide uh, food from the supply. You know, so two of yep. those food, you know exactly what they're going to be, and exactly. so you can plan your turns a lot better around that. Yep, and they're different food as well. So. Yeah, like you say, you you know, okay, I'm going to get a cherry and I'm going to worm, so I can plan accordingly. I can take the different food from the bird feeder, and you know that that actually helps the bunting as well because if you're not having to take um, those those cherries and worms, then then you can you can use the bunting instead. But interesting that they've declined to to go for the cardinal there. Um, you know what's uh, <laughs> what's your take on that? They just they just try and you know force this force this king rail down a bit sooner. Maybe they're they're looking at the fish in the tray and thinking, 
I can go for that, but you know, if your opponent's going to reset the reset the bird feeder anyway, then then your your options are kind of limited there. Yeah, I mean, I see what they're trying to do in terms mm. of okay, I want to get that 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 gnat catcher down, and you know, because it <clears throat> it does take them an, another uh, yeah. you know another turn to draw two cards. They'd have to spend an egg uh, to get the second card until they can get another wetland bird down. So mm. you know, I see what they're going for. I don't, I you know, I I don't think that was uh, the best option, but yeah. it's. Uh, you know, you could certainly uh, see what they're what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't think it's a bad move because I think that's probably what they were planning anyway. You know, they they left their options open. Okay, I'm going first, so I can draw cards if I want to. Uh, but I think their plan initially was always to to get that gnat catcher down just to at least help get the food draw. Um, so they are going for cards here. I'll be interested to see what they do pick up. I mean, they are saved a little bit in that. If they still want to get that cardinal down, you know there is the food in the bird feeder for that, um, so the option is still there. Mm. But um, Bell's Furio is a nice pickup, I think, from the from the deck. You know, if you're getting lots of worms from the gnat catcher and the bunting, then that's almost a freebie getting that down, and, and certainly another bonus card is nice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And they, uh, you know, it's another uh, it's another star nest which they're gonna yep. uh, they're gonna need for the for the platform, or excuse me, the, the bacon nest uh, end of round goal <laughs> at, uh, at, at the end of round three. But, but yeah, that, that Vireo is great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so what what do you think you're looking for if you're Jeece? You know, you've got a nice forest set up, getting a couple of food and maybe a couple of points. You've got a nice um, wetlands as well, getting you cards. So really, they got to try and get some nice, some nice grassland birds here to, to try and build up that engine, I think. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, the you know you can you can get two food a turn in your uh, in your mm. forest, which is which is good. Uh, you know you can get uh, two or, or three uh, cards from uh, from your wetlands. So yeah, I mean, I think and and the you know the brewer's blackbird I think is is a nice uh, you know yep. a nice pickup for them. It's it's only two food, so it's it's you know at most one turn in the forest, right? And then they mm. can whatever cards they get that they they're not going to play they can convert into two points so yeah yeah i think that's a that's a good point you know it's it, it's going to help uh you know with that wetlands i think certainly if they can look to get a second bird down as well in that wetlands that's going to help but you know they're already getting access to three cards if they if they are discarding eggs and yeah you're going to draw a lot of cards that probably aren't going to be suitable for playing um but yeah if you've got something like the blackbird that just kind of gives you that insurance you know you can at least get a couple of points um, from those from those excess cards and yeah I think certainly it's a it's a good first bird to be getting down in your grasslands uh, when you haven't already got anything else built up there yeah no doubt I mean he's he's looking at you know one more one more bird in his in his wetland and then mm. you know build the grassland out you're done absolutely yep yeah I have to agree and yeah I wonder maybe they they might like to get this quail down you know they did go for the for the double seed there um, so so that could be an option for them as well uh, I guess we'll we'll see what they do, but yeah, certainly getting those getting those first two grassland birds, and, and if they're able to get six points a turn from from activating that grasslands, it's just such a strong position to to have at this point in the game. So yeah, feels like feels like a good a good card draw and a good few turns here for for Geist. Yeah, and they just tossed. Yeah, uh, what do you make of that? That 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 feels like a bit of a, a missed opportunity. You know, we talked before about the. You know, it works nicely with the omnivore. You kind of want to get that second second wetland bird down. You know, maybe during that mallard is kind of, um, you know, they've they've tunneled on that a little bit. But you know, there would have been such a nice would have been such a nice bird to get down. You know, for the for the next end of round goal as well. You know, they don't actually already have any platform nest down, so they'll need to get one at some point. Um, and certainly yeah, that, and I that mean, king wonder... was a nice entry. Yeah. I, okay. And now they're now they're going for the now they're going for the mallard. All yeah. right. Yeah, I mean, so, I don't, yeah. I don't mind the mallard. I, I think it's going to help get them more card draw at least because they were a little bit lacking on that front. Um, but yeah, it's a zero point bird, which always feels a little bit disappointing to be playing, you know, at this stage of the game. But they might still be able to make it work. Yeah, I think so. And it, and it, it, you know, anytime you're you're, you know, again, you you look at their their wetland and there there's mm. really no need for them to continue to develop that so really they're they're going to be hoping i i think for for some uh 
some talking birds in the in the grasslands, whether it's you know talk and lay, talk and draw, and yep. uh, try to build their grassland out as well. So in in that sense, I, I you know I think they're they're what they're looking at for the remainder of the game is is kind of uh, kind of similar to the Jeeves. Mm. Yeah, I think certainly at this point they are trying to do what Jeeves was doing about three turns ago. You know, draw through the deck, try and get some nice grassland birds. And, and hope to build that up a bit more because you know the bunting is a nice start but when you draw something like the house finch you know that pairs perfectly so that's a really nice draw there and i think they can you know look to get that down as soon as possible and and suddenly you've got all these birds you've already drawn that you know maybe you weren't going to play but you can turn those into points and new cards with the house finch so uh that's a that's a really nice pull for satch in there no doubt no doubt uh now one of the uh one of the chat uh, somebody was wondering why why no kingfisher. I I presume they were wondering mm. why no no kingfisher for uh, for Satch in there. Yeah. Yeah. I I I think that would have been a nice pull. Uh, you know, it was there in the tray at the start of the round. Um, I think it certainly is a bird I would have looked to pick up for. Uh, you know, it's it, it's 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 going to be loads of points with the omnivore. Uh, it's got plenty of egg spaces. The star nest helps with the next end of round goal. Um, and yeah, I think whenever you look at your opponent's wetlands, you see they've only got one bird, you can feel pretty safe that they're going to play some more wetland birds. So you're going to get some free fish and, you know, they've already got all these other birds in their hand, you know, even with the king roll before that needed fish. And I think if you can get those free fish from the, from the, from the kingfisher, it just helps enable get those other birds down a whole lot easier. And yeah, it does feel like a bit of a missed opportunity, I think, but... Um, you know they've got some nice pulls now from that mallard, so um, I think they I think they have a, a, a good backup here in get the house finch down and, and they can run that grasslands and yeah hopefully start to get some points some new cards and some food as well. Yeah, no doubt, especially you know with G uh, did uh, opt to play that that tanager in the forest. Yep. Uh, you can you know you can be confident if you're Sachin that 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 bird feeder is going to get reset frequently, so yeah. you should get some good looks at that with the bunting. Absolutely, yeah. I'm just I'm um, I'm curious as to what Jesus is going to do here because you know at the moment they're tied on the end of round. I think his plan was to play the quail, um, but that is going to obviously cost an egg, which is then going to lose his end of round. Uh, now he could choose to lay eggs, but you would probably end up skipping the quail because I'd imagine he wants to play that. Um, so it looks like he's going for the eggs, uh, and he is actually tucking the quail. So that's very bold. Um, you know, maybe he's decided the quail's a little bit too late, but you're kind of gambling here that you're going to get some other nice grassland birds, and you know, really, that's probably not what they were hoping for in the tray. So, again, they're just going to have to gamble and, and see what they can get from the deck. Yeah, that's my contribution to say yeah. yes. Yeah, I I agree, Flan. <laughs> that's always good. Yeah, not uh, not a great card draw. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know any bad birds that he draws they're just going to get turned into points from the blackbird but i think at this point in the game you don't want to spend too many turns drawing cards you know if he has to spend the next two turns drawing cards he's losing points on the eggs he's not really building anything up and you know this third round this is really the crucial round for setting yourself up into that fourth round you know you want to end this round with your engine almost fully set up so that you can just score a lot of points you, know, you don't want to spend too many turns trying to dig through the deck and find something good uh, it does feel a little bit, a little bit slow from that perspective from Geest. Yeah, for sure. And it, it looks like Geest uh, is gonna go to the feeder or pick up the the fish to get that osprey down. You think? Or? Yeah, potentially. You know, I think he's, I think he's looking at um, getting that that extra platform nest. Uh, did. Did he just skip the Tanager though? He just Did I see that the right? Tanager. Now, yeah. was that purely a play to try and give himself more dice to roll from the Screech Owl? Because that well, feels I, very it, odd. It, it would have to be. There's, I can, I can see no other explanation. I mean, the, the, you know, certainly not trying to deny the, the Indigo no. thing or anything. So yeah, it must have been just that. Yeah, that is, that is a very strange move. Considering you know they could have, they could have discarded a card and then on the re-roll they'd be taking two dice so you're still giving yourself a decent chance i think that owl missed anyway so it was all in vain and i don't know that's an odd one if that costs them and means that they have to spend another turn gaining food later 
instead of scoring points in that in that grasslands. You know that uh, I don't think it's you know too late in this game for for that to come back and bite them. Yeah, yeah, no, it's every uh, you know every point counts. I think mm. in, in this, and I don't I don't say that as just some platitude, but I mean in this this game in particular, it looks like yeah. you know the way it's set up, it looks like it could be close. And so absolutely. Yeah, we've got some got some good points in the chat actually as well. Um, someone asking why why you wouldn't go for the the white throat swift in the tray for Sachin here. You know, you look at all these birds in his hand. You think you're not got time to play all of these, all the food. You know, at least if you pick up something like the swift, you play it down. You already had the worms, and now when you're laying eggs, you know, you're getting three eggs plus the tuck card and another egg and food. So you're getting five points. You're turning all these extra cards you're not going to play into more points. Certainly not short on egg space. So um, I think that would have been a nice move. Uh, I think the the migratory chimney swift probably feels a little bit too late um, in that perspective. Just to, you know, it is going to help for the end of round goal, but I don't know how much utility they're they're really going to get out of that at this stage. Yeah, and and for that reason, you would you would think uh, the uh, Bell's Vireo would be you know mm. would be preferable. I mean, it yep. can occupy that same spot, and and you can kind of find out what your what your new bonus card would be, which would yeah uh, you know kind of allow you to to make whatever necessary adjustments to it uh, you need to make over these last few turns. So yeah, I think that's a really good point. Actually, I forgot they they had the Bell's Vireo, and you know, I just how much how much are you going to gain out of moving that swift? You know, okay, they they get two food, but they could have got two food from discarding a card. And like we've already said, they've got you know a million cards in their hand that they're not going to play. So uh, I don't think having the swift uh, being able to move into that forest is is particularly helping here. And yeah, you know that that Bell's Vireo is basically the same. It's the same food cost and it's a star nest. It's a point more, and you get the bonus card on top of that. Um, you know, which which always has potential for more points. So. Yeah, I think knowing that that certainly would have been the the one to prioritise. Um, I'm just I'm interested because that house finch still hasn't come down. You know, as soon as that appeared, we both kind of had the same thought of oh hello, you know, this is a really nice bird and, and they can look to oh, get yeah. that down. Um, but it's 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 still set in their hands, so I can only assume that at this point in the game, it's it's not something they're going to look to play. Yeah, and I think you know it's something where uh, somebody was mentioning in the chat. You know, Sachin is is kind of newer uh, mm. to the game, and so uh, you know, I mean, for for those of us who who have just played the game more times than yeah. any person should play it, <laughs> uh, you know, Sachin Sachin has been doing you know useful and productive things, and we've been playing wingspan. So uh, you know, for us, it's it's you know the house pinch like whenever you see it you hear the you know the chorus of angels and uh you know it just that may not be uh something that's you know kind of uh automatic to them so yeah no i think that's a fair point and yeah you know you only you only get to learn the the strong birds that you're that you're comfortable playing with just by playing this game a lot and you know if you have that experience i think you know most most uh most players on the server who've been around for a little while would would agree that the house pitch is, is a nice bird to play so yeah it's one of those where you know certainly the the, the first few times i played this game um i wouldn't have necessarily understood this the strength of something like the house finch but i think you only have to play with it a couple of times just to realize you know getting points from the tucks and the ability to cycle through you know we've already seen they've probably had to spend maybe two turns too many in that wetlands you know, every time you're mm -hmm. doing that it's a turn you're not scoring points so if you can get something like the house finch in your grasslands you're activating it you're scoring points you're laying eggs in this case they're getting food as well from the bunting and you're just able to cycle through those those less good birds you've drawn from the deck and yeah hopefully you're able to turn that into something that that can actually score you points when you play yeah and i mean i know it's a trap that i have fell into i actually i think uh <laughs> memed about it not uh not not all that long ago but uh that i you know i used to fall into a lot and i i still fall into sometimes which is where uh you know you you look at the cards in your hand and you're thinking okay you know this is this is a good bird but not not quite appreciating that okay you get the you know you get the finch down and 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 start to cycle cards you're you're racking yeah. up points like the the difference between maybe the perfect bird or cycling a few times and ending up still with an okay bird it is actually 
significant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agree. And uh, yeah, you know, I think for me, it's always frustrating if I end the game with a lot of cards in my hand because that's kind of a, a good signal that you spent too many turns drawing cards. You know, if you, I think ending with a few in your hand. You know, we look at we look at Gs at the moment. He's got one. I'd imagine he's probably going to draw cards maybe once more because some of those are going to get tucked behind the blackbird but yeah i think there's always a point in this game where you you stick or you twist you know do i do i stick with what i've got try and get the food for that and just work with it play these birds or do i gamble and and draw cards again and maybe sachin's gambled a couple of times too many from the deck um and, and going for these birds and you kind of look at a lot of these birds in their hand they're kind of low point birds they're ones, you know, for example, the sapsucker they've got. Maybe something you play early in the game, but um, maybe not something you look to play now. And yeah, slightly unfortunate draw on the on the bonus card as well. Maybe the fishery manager can work. Uh, they've got a few fish birds in their hand at least. Uh, particularly that that omnivore one might be a good option just for bonus card yeah, points. So the almost almost always useless <laughs> cormorant. Yeah, I think it's a bird that I've. I don't think I've ever seriously played it as a point scoring option as part of an engine. It almost always is. I have wetland scientist and omnivore or fishery manager or I need it because the last round is birds in the wetlands and it will win me the end of round. That's probably the only times I've, I've seriously played it. But yeah, it's yeah, it's not it's not a terrible option in this position, I don't think. Or in, or in my case, you know, uh, you're you're trying to to set or, or tie the omnivore bonus record and and the cormorant goes down <laughs> is that speaking from experience yeah that's speaking from very recent <laughs> experience yeah 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 i did i did see that so <laughs> yeah geese geese actually i i think <laughs> the geese replied to that with yeah. in a way that made it seem like they thought that i was like playing that as though it was uh, well you can normally tell when someone's got a strong engine and they end up with like five eggs and a load of omnivore birds down you think okay you were you were playing for the record but yeah fair play i think that's that's an acceptable approach all right so did, did pick up that uh, yep. that end around with the ink yep. which is nice yeah it was actually not a, not a bad little combo at the end um mm -hmm. You know, the Inca Dove is not a great bird. I don't think it actually scored a lot of points on its own. Um, but it's that fourth grassland bird, so at least when they are laying eggs, they are getting four eggs. And yeah, if you can if you can steal that end of round goal and get a win instead of a tie, it's a three point benefit for you. So that's always a, a strong option to have. Um, sure. I think so, they, yeah, plus yeah. the no, well, go on. Yeah, I think we're gonna say the same thing, which is <laughs> yeah, plus the plus the three eggs it laid, right? So you yep. net the two egg cost, it's it's you know, it then essentially becomes a six-point play. Yeah, exactly. And plus, yeah, six, plus getting six the fourth for two spot food. out. Yeah, yeah, yep. it's not a bad option. And uh, yeah, I think I think the only shame is the bird feeder's not set up for that bunting. But I think they probably were going to have to go for food at least once anyway. Um, you know, if they if they can be really ambitious and go for the double play with the egret and the swan, you know, that would be really nice. It's going to help for the fishery. Um, and you know that that swan is is an omnivore bird as well, so that could be a nice option. Um, maybe just a couple too many turns gaining food for that, um, but certainly they've got some options open for yeah getting some of these big point birds down um, that are going to beat their bonus cards because yeah I think they kind of need to prioritise getting these down um, considering that you know, they're only really getting four points from their grasslands and you compare that to where Gs is at getting six. Um, it's it's a it's a significant difference. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. You're gonna need. Oh, let's see. Okay, well they got one fish, <laughs> um, but a lot of rats, so potentially not what they were looking for. Uh, but actually, that's not bad. You know, if they can if they can lay eggs here and pick up that that worm in the feeder, that does at least give them enough. Um, to get down, uh, you know, they could they could potentially look at getting down the the, the trumpeter swan. You know, that's going to be a big point bird. Um, at least that's, that's going to be one of their bonus cards. So yeah, I think they've got some options here for the end of the game. Yeah, yeah, they could. I mean, I think they could get down. Uh, let's see, they need if if the feeder broke right, if they if they do eggs here mm. and 
take that that grub in the feeder and and then on their next turn you know if the feeder rolls right they can grab one more piece of food they yeah. could get the trumpeter swan down and then uh potentially the uh you know the the forester's turn might maybe mm. might work for their fishery Possibly. i don't know if that would be worth it yeah it might just about be because you know if that is going to be their fourth wetland bird Obviously, it's going to cost them a couple of eggs, so only two points for the bird, but it gets them another three from the bonus, so five points, and you compare that to laying eggs for four. Um, you know, certainly on the surface, it's it's the stronger option. So, um, yeah, I think I think like I said, they have got some good options, and and hopefully they're able to get some big points in this in this last round. Um, I do feel like it probably uh, is just a little bit too late. I feel like Jesus probably um, already got a, a relatively comfortable lead at this point. Uh, you know, just based on, you know, they've got a lot of uh, tuck cards and, and caches in their forest, um, but that that blackbird has been really nice for them as well. So, yeah, I think I think it probably is Jesus to lose at this point. You know, they've got a fairly straightforward end game, just lay eggs and tuck some of these cards. Uh, but you know, it'll be interesting to see um, what sort of score Satchin can get from this position. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know, a Satchin. Uh as Sachin learns and and improves at the game, you know they'll. I mean they've they'll certainly the scores will uh, you know will will jump up and and they'll see. I mean that uh, you know the the one thing the one takeaway I guess uh, for them would be just getting that that house finch down in the grasslands. Yeah. Uh, you know pretty much as soon as they picked it up would have uh, would I think made a made a huge difference for them. Yeah, and you know I think. I think these kinds of opportunities to to have your game streamed uh, is always good. I mean, I still learn things from from watching you know back past streams where I played and thought you know why did I do that or why did I make that decision? You know I should have done this instead. I think that's always a useful learning exercise because you know when you're regularly playing a game of Wingspan, you just don't get that option really to to go back and 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 you know review your play and think. You know, where's the key decision that I made wrong? Um, but certainly, I think these opportunities to to play on the stream, um, yeah, it's it's always a good one, and certainly one I would encourage any newer players. You know, if you do get this opportunity, um, definitely take it because yeah, you can you can learn a, a whole lot from this kind of experience. And I yeah, and I I will tell you, speaking to the, you know, to the to the newer players uh, who who might be. Uh, you know, is scared about it. I mean, I, I've played the game, you know, hundreds or, or even, you know, a thousand times, uh, if you count in real life, uh, in addition to the Discord. I, I'm going to get streamed for the first time on <laughs> Wednesday, and, and I'm terrified. Like, I, I, am, yeah. <laughs> I, am, I am legit, like, scared that I am going to be, you know, it make some horrible mistake, and, and you know, you're going to have some... Uh, yeah some, it's nerve-wracking it is nerve-wracking yeah. yeah i've 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 experienced it myself you know you, you it gets to your head i know i know other other players i've spoken to as well you know these are some of the best players on the server and they still panic and they still worry when they're playing on stream so it is a nerve-wracking experience and yeah you might not be looking forward to it but i am so i can't wait oh, I, <laughs> I i have no doubt you could finally finally get some shots in I'm going to get my own back. It's going to be good. <laughs> Perfect. But yeah, I mean, that just, that, you know, that, that never goes away. I don't think. And, no. and, but you know, what else doesn't go away is the, is the learning opportunity, right? It's like, Absolutely. I'll go, I know I'll go back and watch the games and, and, you know, hear things uh, from the commentators or, or see in the chat and be like, oh yeah, they, I absolutely could have done this one thing better or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, sometimes it is obvious in games. You can you can look back and pinpoint. Ah, oh, this is where it went wrong. Uh, it's not always the case, but I think it is still always you know a useful exercise to go back. Um, but yeah, I think you know Sachin's had a, a couple of decent turns at the end. You know that the egret turn double play is is nice. That's going to score them a few points and help the fishery manager. Um, but it does feel like it was maybe a bit slow on the tempo. And yeah, you know some some nice birds that didn't get down. You know I'd have loved to see that trumpet swan get down. Anytime you get the Omnivore mm -hmm. um, bonus card, it just it's just such a strong play, getting those nine points. Um, and yeah, I think the the score is probably going to be in G's favour here. But um, you know, I don't think I don't think Sachin can be can be overly disappointed with 
with how they play, particularly you know across the two games. And considering this is their first tournament, um, I think they can be they can be you know proud of uh, of, of how they played here. Oh no doubt. I mean, you know, Jeez is Jeez is no joke, and mm. and I yep. think Sachin uh, acquitted themselves very well. Absolutely. And yep, as the scores come in, it's uh, is a fairly comfortable win for Jeez in the end. And yeah, they take game two, uh, and having won game one as well, that sends them through into the next round. So. Uh, huge congratulations to Geest and uh, yeah, well played to both players. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not fancy enough yet to get those uh, get those sound effects. So I'm glad you're you're here to have me covered. <laughs> yeah, you you get you get my uh, my budget trumpet. Here. Yeah, excellent, good stuff. All right, well that concludes the games we had planned for today. So thanks everyone who has joined. Um, if you are interested in joining our tournament discord there will be a link in the description of this video so you can come and join us um, like I said this is a new tournament we started but uh, we do start tournaments fairly regularly so you know, normally two or three tournaments a month uh, depending on how long uh, each of them take but yeah if you want to get involved definitely join us um, and yeah thanks again everyone for watching and thanks to my co-host for joining me today so first of all we had mother love and obviously Groovenstein uh, for this second game. So yeah, thanks to you both. Cheers. All right. And on, on behalf of Mother Love, uh, uh, I'll say something in French. <laughs> there, no, I'm not going to actually say something in French, but that's you know no. I've. Uh, uh, thank you and goodbye. And, <laughs> and on that bombshell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's right. go out with a go out with a whimper. Yeah, apparently. I'll, I'll I'll end the stream before we get too sidetracked. So uh, yeah, yeah, thanks everyone, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you on the next stream. Oh, okay.